There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. Yeah. Yes, Whoa. 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 Is that Whoa. Right? Ah. These guys are going to be completely alone, filming everything themselves. OK, I got him. We've landed in the middle of an alien movie. When pushed to the extreme, no. do they still have what it takes to survive? It will become Lord of the Flies. Did you just do a wanker sign towards me? Um, I think we'll start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. This isn't about talk, this is about action. If you think you can do it, prove it. Can't believe Ryan, it! Ryan. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, brace! One. It's now the second week since 13 British men were abandoned... It's like suckling from the teat again. Oh, ..on a remote Pacific island. And all they have to keep them alive are a few basic tools. Look at that, what could possibly go wrong there? Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen, but they're living under exactly the same conditions... Good luck. ..as everyone else. Thank so far, they've hunted down... Holy shit, the bed, man. ..and killed their first big prey. Seen that edge, then it just... Shut me over the edge a bit. The longer we're here, the more our inner savage past will reveal itself. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time, we're a tribe. But despite this success, food is now running dangerously low. And the men have drastically lost weight. The reality of island life is biting. Oh, I'm going to kill one. Living on the edge of existence... Be stealthy. ..the men are now losing hope. <laughs> I think it broke my hand. Ah. Oh. oh, it smells a bit down here. Hello. Am I sitting in fish guts or something? There's not a very good smell here, um, but f it. So day eight, and shit has gone down. Tempers are about to flare. I can see arguments about to kick off, honey. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. In the men's exposed camp, bitter winds from the Pacific have dropped the temperature by nearly 20 degrees. Ryan, get your feet off the bar. Ryan, get your feet off the bar. Or I should pull them off. Get off, Tony, get off. Ryan, no, just don't. Listen to me. You'll fall asleep. Your feet are in the fire. Where are you going? Don't speak to me. Ryan's feet had gone over the safety bar. It's his personal safety that's important. Ryan! Retired policeman Tony from Yorkshire has taken on the role of fire safety warden. Ryan! To be honest, I don't care how he speaks to me. I don't want to be woken up at all. I have trouble sleeping. The only way my feet were going to set on fire in the position that we're in is if they were going to spontaneously combust. Uh, I'll just sit near the fire, wide awake, what? Three feet away, okay. arms, legs, arms and legs crossed. Right, I'll sit and watch you. Go on. You don't need to sit and watch me. No, well, OK, I won't watch you then. You'll go get down. Shouting in the bloody ear hole in the middle of the night. We're not actually in Korea. Um, <laughs> and there is no enemy. <laughs> you dis disturbed everybody when you did it. Well, in I could... the manner that you did it. Sometimes just, just, just taking a slightly different point of view with certain people might be, might be worth doing. It's a consideration, isn't it? I'm sorry for disturbing you, Fletch, but which was the priority? Ryan's feet are a few guys sleeping. Sleep never killed anybody. Fire doesn't burn feet here. That have been the end of Ryan as part of the team. Dawn. The 
the men have had just two hours of unbroken sleep. This is where it gets hard. You might just have to stop and just appreciate what we've got in front of us. Well, I think one of the intriguing things about this experiment is that the wild is unpredictable. And what's interesting is see what's going to happen when you're tired and you're hungry and you're thirsty and you're missing home. Then you learn what people are really like. And that's when it becomes interesting. I didn't realize just what, what, what hunger meant. I really didn't. It's not a rumble in your tummy. That, that's long, long past. Chopped off 13 men, gonna pick up 13 hobos. On the island, lack of sleep isn't the only issue that's plaguing the men. Yes, I am covered in it, look. My face, my cheek, my forehead. I've been absolutely yeah. bit to shit. By night, they're subjected to constant sandfly attacks. You see those? I've never known an itch like it in my life. It's like someone's stabbing you in the hand with a really hot pin over and over and over and over again. Look at the state of me. If they think this is fake, <laughs> they can fuck off. <laughs> Ryan's invented a unique way to beat the critters. Uh, a couple of days ago, during the diary cam, realised they had zombie flesh from the insect bites. So uh, I had a bit of spare fabric. Started to sleep like this. Yeah. Keep the insects off my face, yeah. and it seems to be working. Is that the back of your pants when you pull it down? Oh, is it? It's good, mate. It's ingenious. 21-year-old Ryan is the youngest man on the island. He lives in Stockport. I don't think I've seen the side of him being a natural hunter-gatherer, but I think that you can develop that. I like to think that I can make a bed or nest out of anything. You lay the towel down. I like to think of myself as quite practical when it comes to things like this. It doesn't look like much, but after a night out, this has saved your life. <sighs> Maybe you could say I'm a survivor in the sense that I don't let myself die. So far, Ryan struggled with the severe conditions, but he's trying his hardest to fit in with the group. Ah, oh, this is great morning. Do you know? Oh, you've lost your tits, bro. <laughs> Ryan's really struggling, but um, he makes me laugh way more than anybody else here. You can buy unicorn meat off Amazon. It's basically just spam with glitter in it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so don't get it. Yeah. However, living in such hostile conditions can take its toll. Let's go, man. You feeling rough or what? <sighs> I just feel minging. I'm not going to lie, I'm not feeling too great. <sighs> this, this is still hurting me. That's making me feel like an absolute prick. To make matters worse, I just had a dream about Natalie, my beautiful girlfriend. And uh, a huge part of me wants to go home. A huge part of me. Despite one solid meal of Cayman crocodile, the men are all suffering eating on average a dangerously low 300 calories a day. Who needs Domino's pizza when you've got snail bro? <laughs> and starvation is fast creeping up on them. It's one of our big issues right now is we're not catching any fish in these nets. I think we need to move them. So you've got to track them, you've got to trace them. It's the same as anything. And if we just sit here waiting for it, we're stupid. If we don't have food, we don't have energy, eventually we all sort of roll up and die. So we need to, we need to have food. <laughs> The men's camp is established on a beach at the southern tip of the island. I've ensured this island has enough water animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive. But only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. Day 12 and there was no fish in the net again. The men have made fishing nets from the washed up debris found on the beach. But so far, they've caught almost nothing. I'm not the best swimmer, that's why I don't help out with the girl nets. I can swim, but I can't, I can't save my life swim. If it was in a life and death situation, I'd die. What is it? Poofy. Oh, no. 
All we're catching in those nets is poo fish. Poo fish. And when I say poo fish, a poo fish is a fish that tastes like poo. Literally tastes like poo. Yet again, the men have left the nets in the warm Pacific water too long, and the fish have died and begun decomposing. So this is the poo fish. It's inedible, considering we would eat almost anything right now. And we're not eating poo fish, so it tells you quite how much it tastes like poo. Such a shame, it smells like the right kind of thing. This is revolting. When Mother Nature slams that larder door firmly shut, things in a group can rapidly go downhill. You're hungry, you're despondent, and it's so tempting to give up. But like so many things in life and in the wild, it's actually about how you respond to those crisis moments. So where are we going, Sam? We're going foraging. In their second week on the island, and with energy levels at rock bottom, the men's very survival hangs in the balance. How good would a caiman be right now, Chris? I have vague and fond memories of caiman. It's the same people always working hard, I think. Fletch, Matt, Kiff, Dan, Sam, Saki and Chris. They're the kind of ones that are always keen to go and do shit. There's a, a kind of core group of resters. They do a little bit here and there, just enough not to completely piss you off. There he is. One so-called rester, Ryan, the youngest member of the group, has been spotted aimlessly wandering alone. We found him. What's he doing all the way up there? It's good to tell us what he's up to before he goes. Hi, hey, mate. How are you? I feel a bit useless at the moment. Do you? Why? I just feel weak. I don't think Ryan's really sort of engaging with the group and uh, generally helping out. He's quite distant. Yeah, disengaged with the whole process. So I'm just, I'm just genuinely worried about the guy. As the adventure and experience has got harder, relationships between people have become a little more tense. Everyone is very aware who's, who's doing what in the camp now. Don't give me a dress, right? Again. No. He's just idle. It's just an insult to the rest of us. You know, he's only young, and people are probably judging him a little bit too quickly, if I'm honest. i got to be honest, I don't think Graham will see 14 days on the island. I don't think he's going to make it, to be honest. Some people are looking for work, and other people are not seeing it when it's right in front of them. Say like Ryan. You know, he's... he's sitting down there doing nothing now, and has been for the last hour and a half. You know, we're too close to the edge of existence to, you know, to have passengers. I don't know if I'm strong enough to do this challenge. I need to go up there, clean up. I can't. Train, but I can't. Right, I need to go. Right, mate. In the midday sun, the temperature is 35 degrees and 70% humidity. You say you weren't any good at rugby? I played, but I was the smallest in the year. Really? Ryan's been asked to help the others prepare a new sleeping area inland, away from the sandflies on the beach. There's just no point just moving two or three leaves, Pat. Either do something or don't bother doing anything. That kid's head is up his arse. What's the matter, kid? You, are you going to kill somebody? Could just gave me the broom and said, might be easier with this. What's the matter, mate? Well, honestly? Yeah, go on. Ryan. He's been sat in his arse all morning. And other people have been knocking their pipes out. Yeah. And we were clearing up the top camp. And then comes back and he's got a stick and he's just moving that leaf to there, that leaf to there, that leaf to there. And I've been... <sighs> Sorry, I'm dehydrated and I'm just a bit grumpy. Thanks, Thanks. But it's just... Who are we on? Have a guess. Ooh. Brian, do you see everyone working here? You know, you've been walking around in a dream this morning and not doing any work. And we are fucking working hard. I was trying to help. I feel like I'm going to fucking collapse, man. I'm trying my fucking hardest. I really am. Yeah, but you see, Well, OK. I don't need but... you. Oh, sorry. I'm really sorry, buddy. Oh, don't but be like that. Don't you. be like that. I know you are. It's driving me fucking bonkers. Yeah. <sighs> me 
Can't do it, Dan. I need to go. You need to put yourself in a positive frame of mind. You can't Impossible, do it. it's too late. You're not useless. I am. I clearly fucking am. And don't worry about anyone else. Worry about yourself. I can't stand with the idea of one person thinking like that about me. Ryan's starting to great with a few people, including myself, and pretty much everything he does here is a pointless exercise. Ryan's really quite distant and a bit disengaged with the whole process, so I'm just, I'm just genuinely worried about the guy. Three p.m. Most of the group are gathered in the shaded area in camp. It's a long time to be walking. I've got a feeling he's, he's, um, he's gone. You know. Who was that, Sam? Yeah, Ryan. Ryan. And, uh, Let, let's Ryan. deal with the situation now. How long has he been gone? Well, he's been gone for a couple of hours. Has he got his hat with him? I know, but he shouldn't no, go, he he shouldn't go on his own. It's pretty clear what the rules are, and safety-wise, mm. you shouldn't go off on your own more than 200 metres in the camp. But it's, but it's Ryan has now been missing in the unrelenting tropical heat for two hours. But also, it's in the middle of the day. He took, to my knowledge, he took no water with him. Last seen heading south, alone and without water, Ryan is in imminent danger. So I think two guys should initially set off to find him. Yeah, agreed. I'm quite happy to go and look for him. You know, we're here, we're here to survive as an island community. It is for us as a community to sort this out. But it's pretty fucking devastating, that, yeah. to lose two guys right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and not be collected too, because we've got nothing. With little energy left, Two men searching for Ryan and not gathering food is further depleting their reserves. He's going out, lone wolf, doing what he wants, when he wants, sulking, behaving like a teenager and all that shit, and it's just... It's... Would you go so far as to say that if he carried on behaving like this day after day, you'd just rather he wasn't here? Yes. Anyway, let's go. Do it. Yeah, I'll take the camera you Thanks, mate. Good luck. Thanks, man. Bye. The island has a circumference of eight kilometres. It's covered in dense forest, harsh rocky terrain and has perilous tides. Let's race up the rocks. You and I are pretty good at that. Let's yeah. do that. So even the most experienced survivor can get in trouble here very quickly. Ryan shouldn't be clambering over this stuff. On his own? No. Ryan! What's he fucking thinking? He's a 20-year-old kid from Stockport. This is a hostile place. Ryan! The problem is, he could, be, he could be hidden behind any of those rocks up there, or any of these rocks here, but... Ryan! Ryan! I think we've now got a young man in a very vulnerable situation, which could be have dire effects on his own personal health. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, he's, he's boosted health and safety, and he's, he's not only jeopardised his own health and safety, he's jeopardised our health and safety. We are putting ourselves at risk end yeah. to go and find him. Ryan! Where the fuck is he is the big question. Even when the cameras aren't rolling, the men's audio is recorded 24 hours a day. If I do die, please, someone listen to this. And I say, Mum, thank you for giving me life and for giving me everything else after. Ryan! Oh, hang on, there's a footprint here. Huh? Footprint here. Daylight is now running out. Ryan has been missing for five hours in the 35 degree heat and without water. Ryan! The thing about dehydration is that it can creep up on you very, very fast. And the average human body probably carries about 80 litres of fluid. And once you've lost 30% of that, the reality is you're going to die. Ryan! Ryan! A lot of people are very fucking angry because he's putting the group at risk. Where I come from, if you keep running off despite the rules and you act like a stupid little child, that's how you will get treated. None of this, oh, let's be nice to him, let's try to bring him round. No, you get told the to fuck off. You get told if you keep being stupid, you're out of here. That's how it works where I come from. One less, one less mouth to feed. Well, there's less mouth to feed. One less mouth to feed, one less person to worry about. I like him. Yeah, I no, really like I, him. No one, he, no one he's dislikes. so funny. And he's and all those great things, but I just, I really, I get my gut feeling is that he, he just ain't cut out for it. I've worked with teams of blokes and yeah. women 
And if anybody in the, in, in the team, I know they were getting well paid as police officers, but at the end of the day, if one was letting the team down... Why, well, they'd have to go. They went. Yeah. You know, they had no option. And I, I get what you mean. Like this, this, uh, this, this is like a bigger situation as well, because of the, the, the this, heat... This, the, this is life-threatening. This is life-threatening, yeah. yeah. Run! <laughs> the tide's coming in really fast. We're going to have to start scrambling through the forest to get back if we don't find him soon. With only 60 minutes till sundown and the tide coming in, Matt and Rupert have a choice. Ryan! Call off the search and leave Ryan at the mercy of the elements. Ryan! Or return through the jungle in the dark. It's just thick, thick, dense forest everywhere. I have to SOS this fucker. I've given up on everything in my life. I'm not giving up on this. Ryan! Ryan! Oh, there he is. You got him? Yeah. He's walking away? No, coming towards us very slowly. Uh. And he looks a bit fucked. He's an idiot. He is an idiot. That's how people die. Where have you been, mate? Just be walking down the coast. Yeah, hang on, stop a second. Stop, 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 stop. Have you had anything to drink? No. You have had nothing to drink? I don't want anything. You do need something to I drink. I'll just get back. Mate, we're I'm all going to get back, drink. but you need something to drink. You'll collapse on the way. Let's sit down for a second. Brian, okay? let's sit down over here, come on. Down soon. soon. Yeah, I know. Brian, you haven't drunk for at least four or five hours. And you've been in the midday sun. Sit down and let's get some water in you. At the moment, let everybody down. Sorry? Don't worry about that. Don't worry. You so let back. everyone down. Okay, don't worry about it, mate. I'm more concerned that you... Cut you. You get better, mate. I'm more concerned you get better, and you need some water in you right now. Yeah? You need all of that in you. You've been a long way. <coughs> Take it easy. Just sip it. Get it down slowly. Get the lot down. You need to have drunk about two to three litres a day. And I don't think you've drunk even one litre a day, have you? No. Quite anything good. Fuck off. Coat hanger, always handy. For Grandpa. For Grandpa. <laughs> I'll keep him happy. Sorry, guys. Don't worry about it, mate. We're just pleased you're safe. That's the main yeah. thing. We're pleased That's you're safe. That's the important thing, mate, you're safe. Because we were all getting a bit worried for you, and it was the middle of the day. You've been too nice to me. Well, shouting doesn't really help, does it? But I appreciate your apology. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. No, that's worth something. Yeah. Let's get you back to camp. Oh, get you hydrated, get coconut in you and your up. I'd love to say we've got a feast prepared, but, um... Yeah. You've got fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there'll be a big part I'll of carry that. I'll carry oh. that. No, 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 I'll, I'll carry it. Carry it. Right. 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 I want you to concentrate I'll on walking. You need to You're staggering on. around and stuff, OK? So you get one hand on your stick. I've had water now. Yeah, but you... Yeah, no, but it'll take a while for it to work. You just get going. if we make it round. <sighs> yes, we are being a little bit too nice to me. But still. Get him back. I don't know. Can this be found? Everybody's safe, which is the important thing. Did you see any before? No. I did genuinely feel like I was going to die at one point. Yeah, I'm not surprised, mate. A big log landed on my foot. I moved it eventually. How long were you under the log? I don't know, about five minutes. Okay. You know, we, we're not looking after him. No. He's not, no. he's not one of our children. He's, and he's, he's a grown man. He's here on an equal basis as a yeah, man he is. with the rest of us. Obviously, a soft approach hasn't worked. We, we failed on we failed on the soft approach. And what, what are you proposing as a hard approach? What's your definition of a hard approach to make the to make the lad feel like a twat? You know, mate, you're part of the team. You're part of the team, so we do worry about you. Yeah, we're all going to get through this together. Yeah. 
So I'm not giving up. Ah, oh, there's no question of giving up. Not to carry me off dead or alive. Oh, I'm yeah. Not walking That's off the island. Right. I've got one idea that we tell Ryan in no uncertain terms the position he's in, and he stays in camp with me under my watchful eye. And if he decides to wander off, then I appear to have two options. Let him wander off and somehow notify the guys to go stop him, or I physically, physically try to stop him, which could constitute an assault. I'll tell you something, mate. They'll all be pleased to see you. Did he get some food? What? Did he get some food? Did he? Yeah. No. What's he carrying? It's a bag of shite. Tony, Brian's got a present for you, mate. It's lovely to see you, mate. Thanks, it's sorry. really lovely to see you. I'm almost in tears to bloody well see you. Stop it. No, I'm not stopping it. We just want you back, mate. Come here. Come here. The men have spent the day concentrating on finding Ryan, which means the only food in camp are leftover snails. Find any oysters, Joe? Oysters? Didn't find any oysters. Ryan, did you, at any point did you consider us guys? You didn't tell us where you were going, you'd been gone hours and it was coming in dark? Don't really know how to answer that. Sorry? Don't really know how to answer that. Well, either you, 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 you did give a shit or you didn't. I don't think it's fair to say that I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand how you can be gone for so long and just not come in and say, oh, sorry, lads. I'm, I'm over this now. I'm here to survive, not babysit. <laughs> Now, I'm a very honest person, and this diary cam is a very honest thing. It's an experiment. It's not a weakness if you can't stand it and you need to go home. I guarantee you 13 people will not leave this island. 13 people will not leave this island. You know, this, this place looks like paradise, but uh, this place can be very hostile. One wrong foot and you're in trouble, you're lost, or you're dehydrated, or you're in danger. You have to respect this place. Oh, well done, mate. Good. How are you this morning, mate? All right, yeah. Better? How's the hand? Just getting there. Yeah. One or two more days, I think. Yesterday, in the 35 degree heat, Ryan went missing without a supply of water. Forced to take action, Rupert and Matt found him nearly five hours later lost and severely dehydrated. Some people are giving me the cold shoulder today. Hopefully I can change everyone's attitudes towards me. I feel like some people have already made their mind up. The last few days have pushed the group of men really to the limit. And the truth is, if they don't start looking after each other, being resourceful and surviving, they haven't got a cat's chance of making it to the end of this month. Oh, I just want to say sorry to everyone about yesterday. I want you all to know that I wasn't storming off in a mood for anything. I just went for a forage, you know, it was against protocol. I just didn't want to return empty-handed, uh, got a bit lost, and then that's, that's why I was gone so long. So, yeah, I'm sorry. This wasn't him going off to go and forage stuff. It was a cry for attention, a cry for help, a cry for whatever. I should have been finding food and I wasted it uh, on him. If you had someone back home like Ryan, would you throw them to the wolves? I don't think you would. You'd help them. You'd try and find their strengths and weaknesses. It's too easy to say he's lazy. Jobs for today? Who's on water and fire? I would like to do water and wood and fire today. And I just need one willing helper who's prepared to graft their nuts off. Do you want a go with me? Yeah. I will that. beast you all day. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, I will, but at the end of the day, we'll have done a shitload. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to give Ryan a chance, you know, because, you know, I know I'd had a go at him. I think he deserved it. And there's no good just sort of pushing someone down if you don't try and pick him up again afterwards. Come on, Ryan. I think all he needs is someone's approval. I think that's what he's after. While Kiff takes Ryan on the water run, the others desperately scour the island for food. I've said this many times, but I cannot wait to have a seafood platter at home. 
Do you know what I mean? I cannot wait. These are good. These are falling out of the tree above where we are. And they're not the best thing you're ever going to eat. When you bite into them, kind of a cross between mud and an old strawberry. Right now, it's doing it for me. Just gives you that little bit of something, yeah? I think that one's, rot that one's actually rotten. Exerting energy in this heat can cause a man to sweat over a litre of water every hour. OK. Oh. <laughs> Take that. You Stop. do tops, I'll do... Are you sure? Yeah. Collecting clean water can mean the difference between life and death for the men. I've watched Ray Mears all my life. I've read the book, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, I've just always been sort of a fantasy to come to Desert Island and do this. I'm just finding it a lot harder than what I imagined, so I'm just going to try and get my head down and get on with it. When did you leave school? I did go to college. I did business, English language, geography and biology. Failed them all. I think I had such a lazy attitude. Did you go to university? No. I got chucked out of pretty much every school I ever went to because I was a lazy little bugger. <laughs> Probably much like yourself. I've been doing sound recording for 17 or 18 years now. I'm the guy with the hook. <laughs> I think because my jobs enable me to travel and see all types of people doing all types of things, the one thing I've learned, with kindness, things can be OK. And I think on the island, that is what's going to do it. Here we go. Chuff, chuff. Ryan, he's been pulling his finger out. Kip was on him, babying him. But if the babying works, then the babying is what we have to do. Breathe in, and then just watch. Ooh. The fact that Ryan can't swim means he can't help with tasks like pulling in the fishnets, and this isolates him from the group. That slowly. So Kiff wants to help. Okay. I really wanted to prove myself. I'd even have a go swimming out doing the gill nets, depending on how that swimming lesson goes. So you, you, your body's sort of turning. See, I'm already losing confidence. You, you'll be, you'll be, let's just get in and do it. Big shout out for Kiff, really, because you can see Ryan's spirits lift. One, two, three, three. Good. One. I've got so much respect for Kiff. I realised that he was right, I was wrong. I've not been pulling my weight. I need to man up. <laughs> it's one of the least attractive I look whilst on the island. <laughs> Jeez. No, no, even it works, trust me. <laughs> First sign of fish returning to the bay. There's one lone pelican here fishing. So our nets might hold something for breakfast, actually. The men now haven't eaten a solid meal for four days. From their one day of survival training, the men know the sea is their best hope of catching food. You got one sack? For the first time, Ryan has joined Kif, Saki and the others to help pull the nets in. Yeah, get it, get it. Ah! Look at that. Beauty! There's a stingray in the net. He's out, he's out. Shit. You weren't hungry enough, mate. You didn't have the hunger. I do now. I'm going to kill one of those fuckers before I leave. No, you pissed off. Yes. For Saki, it's a bitter fail. Yay! But another net remains. Look at that, piggy. Yeah, fish. The second net has delivered the men's biggest haul to date. Catching eight edible fish means vital protein to keep the group alive. Bear Grylls, <laughs> this survival program is a piece of fish. <laughs> However, the net has also brought in an unwelcome visitor. That's the deadly stonefish. Shit. So these spines here, you stand with these spines. Boom. Boom. It's not great. <laughs> okay. 
A stonefish has 13 large spines and each one contains venom so deadly it can kill you within two hours. Beautiful in a strange kind of way. Now that is a prehistoric fish. Didn't think we were going to see one of these, you know? Which one are you going for? Oh, I see the size of that going in there, Matt. Oh, man. <laughs> if we can get a net of fish like that every day, then I think I'm just going to uh, enjoy this opportunity while, whilst it's here. What a fabulous way to start the day. That was just a huge surprise this morning. With the bumper haul of eight fish cooking, all the men, apart from Ryan, are gathered by the fire. I don't like Ryan missing at morning briefings. I don't think it should happen. He should do his diary cam at another time. He should be here. It's no, important. I said no, it's not. It's not Selavie Fletch. He's yeah. vulnerable. No, it's not. Away from camp, Ryan is attempting to dispose of the stonefish. That fish is twitching quite a lot, and I'm starting to feel really bad. So I'm going to bash its head in. Just to be sure, because I don't want it to suffer. Always a shame to see a, a fellow stoner go. <laughs> right, Ryan was about burying the stonefish. Um, it was getting out of the way, so nobody stood on it. Um, it was a pretty important job to get out of the way, because it's a yeah. deadly fish. Obviously, didn't know we were having a meeting, so... He should be here. I'm making my point, Fletch. I've overruled you. Why can you overrule somebody yeah, by overruled shouting? You. I have nothing more to say. So we've got foraging. So there's a, a team going up to the northwest coast. Today, uh, Ryan didn't come to the meeting, which to me was not on, and I made my point. I think day one, Ryan has been the one that's been at risk. He's injured himself. He's totally disorganised around the camp. Everybody's agreed that he's a liability. And I, I'm, I'm keeping it in. I'm, I'm biting my tongue. But Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's doing a good job there. It's a job that needed doing. Yeah. And he was getting... And, and, and I'm not going to have that. It's bullying. Grandad's in a bit of a feisty mood today. Yeah. I just want to say, if he shouts at you, don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Just don't walk away. Promise me you won't walk away. Yeah? I won't walk away. Just, um, just take I, it all I've on. I've never stormed off. I know, no, no, no. I'm just saying, take it on your broad shoulders. Yeah. If he, if he yeah. has a go at you. Yeah. Okay. Midday in camp, the men can finally feast on their first meal of fish. Thank you so much, mate. Some proper food. Hey. It's the best feeling in the world. Like, I don't know what it's like to have a baby, because I don't have one, but I'd say it's better than birth. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what fish it is? Sea fish. Sea fish. I sea like sea fish. fish. Edible sea fish. Mm. Oh, my God. Is it good? What, mate? Really good. Mm. Things are looking up. We had beautiful fish just now. Finally, the nets came good, and we caught some fish, and it's fucking great. It'd be nice to have a little kind of lemon sauce or something, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, you're never, never, really. never happy. Thank you, Isla. Thank you, Gilman. I feel like a new man. I feel like I'm back to myself. Every, every kind of... All because of a bit of fish. Imagine when we get back and we're eating burgers. We're going to be, like, off our head. So when we're all having our first burger or whatever we're all going to have, and we start to cry, we should bottle our tears because uh, you can sell your tears of joy on the internet. <laughs> Have you ever bought tears on the internet? It's too expensive, to be honest. Yeah. Tears of joy are like 30 quid a pop. Are they? <laughs> they're that big. How big to pop? It is incredible what a difference to everybody's spirits one meal can make. <laughs> Ryan sitting there holding court, just talking rubbish, making everyone laugh. Absolutely brilliant. You get a certificate saying where they came <laughs> from and that. Google it. Wow. Oh, it's incredible. That is beautiful. Looks like they're all flying home for something. Full from last night's meal, a different concern is now the talk of the camp. The trouble is, in a hot environment like desert or here, you sweat so much, your body tries to hold on to any water it can, so it's very easy to get constipated. Joe, how many days since you've been? Eight. 
<laughs> no, nine, nine days. Nine. You haven't had a crap for nine days? No, yeah. no nine days. I've not had one for nine days either. Well, longest yeah. I've ever been in my life. A new Ryan always, record. Always, always thought you were full of shit. <laughs> I'm going to point things out to you now while you're here. In the sleeping area, Quartermaster Tony is on the warpath. Your hat is there. Yeah, Your belt is there. I know where the hat is. I know yeah. where the belt is. Everything's all over. No, it's not. OK. Not. It's always bollocks every five minutes. Where's? Tony all the time digging at people, pissing me off. There's no need for it. There's no fucking need for it. I don't, I don't know what his problem is. Tony, mate. Lay off him, because he has turned a corner. And he hasn't turned the full corner. OK, but we're getting there. Yeah. And if you and, and things like that, could, we'll send him back. Yeah, I've laid off now for a few days, but we are carrying him. Tony slightly has it in for Ryan, because I think he sees him as a bit of a hippy-dippy sort of soul. He needs to go to boot camp, but this is not boot camp island. This is about surviving. Truth is, this is so much harder than what I ever thought it was going to be. I'm just going to do everything in my power now to make sure that nobody feels like I'm not pulling my weight. For these guys, you can ask the course, there will be an enduring sense of self-respect and pride. And it's easy to talk a good story, but ultimately, this isn't about talk, this is about action. So where are we going, Ryan? Going to Echo Beach, getting some snails. Determined to prove himself, Ryan heads out to forage for food. But this time, he's asked Saki to come with him. Is that an injured one, I see? One of them might be. The men are only ever one failed catchaway from extreme hunger. Hey, Saki, hang on, hang on, hang on! Ryan has spotted something that might sustain the group a lot more than snails. He's injured. Wait, the poor guy. Um, some sort of seabird, I don't know. It's got beautiful green eyes. I want to I end this thing's misery ASAP, because it's, it's not even giving, giving me a fight. For animal lover Ryan, killing the cormorant humanely and quickly is of the utmost importance. It's a sad situation, but it's, it's the kindest thing to do, so if we're going to kill for our food, this is probably the, 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 the way that least makes me feel guilty. Right, I'm going to do it. Right, hang on. Just as hard as I can, yeah? As hard as you can. This is your moment of glory, mate. Mate, that's dead. I think that's a job well done, Ryan. He's gone from being a lazy no-hoper, really, to, you know, pulling his finger out and fully immersing himself in the activities of the group. And that's, that's, that's commendable on, on so many levels. What you got, Ryan? Nature provided us with a little extra. You kill it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Nice one. Yeah. Well done. Well done. It's a beautiful creature as well. Bend it the way it's not meant to go. Ryan, for the first time, is providing the men with dinner. Yeah, so you get your fingers in there now, can you? And is prepping the bird under yeah. Farmer Joe's instructions. That's it. And what's that there, look? It's just a little heart. You've done a really good job, and. I think that's why we're all here, aren't we? To, you know, to do something that we wouldn't normally do at home. Are you, you going to eat it? Saki has dibs this one. Has he? Yeah, he wants some of the uh, power. I'm going to go and wash my hands, I think. Hold on, Ryan. I killed it and I got the meat out and now I'm cooking it. That is one of my main goals, what I've to achieve coming to this island and I think I've... Uh, I've done it, so I'm uh, quite proud of myself, really, but... Wow. Thanks, buddy. It's proper meat. It's bloody lovely. Well done, man. Thank you so much. Mmm. That's cormorant heart. Tastes oh. just like chicken liver. Yeah. Give us a hug. Look, you know my bit of sharpness and hardness? Yeah. Underneath here, look at me. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm as soft as a brush, you know. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, it just feels like treating me a bit different to no, everybody Well, else. let's say perhaps I have done, and I sincerely apologise for that. Give us another hug. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Spirit and energy levels high, the men are gathered to mark another week spent on the island. Fire, fire! Fire, fire! Under an emerging moon, Ryan has been given the sole responsibility of lighting the fire. 
Please stay lit. I was worried when I thought he might leave the islands. But he's really picks himself up and he's given himself a good kick in the arse and he's, yeah, he's behaving like a man. OK, nice, Ryan. I do think it's a culture, especially men, we see low moments as weak moments. And I think what happens when you're vulnerable with each other, you create strong bonds. And where there's strong bonds, there's strength in the team. Easy at home, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You've got to work for your shit here. I've already found out something about myself, is that I'm a prick. I'm a total prick. Definitely see this as a turning point, not just on the island, but in my life. It's not exactly the island of the super vixens. I'm in a dream world. What are you talking about? <laughs> My libido's not gone anywhere. First two nights, I had a boner. <laughs> what about you, Ryan? How's your libido? Like, I had morning glory the first night, and after that, nothing. Getting a bit worried now. They're like per poking a marshmallow into a money box when you get home, mate. <laughs> like every, every couple of days, I'm on the rock. I'm just going to look for some, uh, way. I'm out there on <laughs> Wang Rock. <laughs> Didn't find nothing. <laughs> Go look for some snails. <laughs> Go look for some snails. <laughs> 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 Ah, Next on the island, tensions in the camp are rising. The group is torn apart. I'm not bitching. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. I don't know who thinks he is, and you haven't got no fucking right to come and speak to me like that. This is dangerous, but. Will it be survival of the fittest? I think we start sticking some of the fucking weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another the, island. The guy's a cocksucker. Not allowing the group to spit should be of the utmost priority. 